80 to 90 percent of all failures in RV furnaces are because of these two items. So please. Find out what type of uh, system you have in your RV. Do the research. Get the make and model. And order these parts ahead of time. Now. 17 bucks each. Order them now, guys, because you can fix it yourself. We couldn't get an RV tech out here. If we had, it would have cost us 400 bucks for the service call. And it was a pretty simple fix. Three years ago, when we decided to start RVing full-time, we were never supposed to be in cold weather. The plan was chasing 70, right? But someone decided <laughs> to buy a campground and I thought, oh, Alabama's the South, it'll be warm. It was 17 degrees last night, you guys. It gets cold in Alabama, we're in the mountains. Yeah, and so this is a $17 fix. That is the difference between being warm in the winter in your RV or freezing your... Uh, you know what? Uh, <laughs> or calling somebody to come out and spend three, four, five hundred dollars $500 to come out and change a $17 item. So please watch the video beginning to end. I think this is one of the most useful videos we've ever done because it was so painful going through this. I did this install in the middle of the night when Mercedes and the baby were sleeping, trying to be quiet because I had to get my family heat. I did a ton of research, watched a lot of videos. I found out the fix. And as soon as I figured out what the fix was, I wanted to alert all RV Odd Squad members exactly what you need to purchase to protect yourself from the cold. So my first challenge is, is that I gotta figure out where the furnace is. And I've heard it pop on, but I've never actually searched for it. So what I'm doing is walking around the exterior of the RV and looking for two holes. Um, exhaust holes for the vents. You're pretty much gonna walk around and you're gonna wanna look for one of these right here. See where it says Suburban? This is where your furnace is right inside. Now, as soon as I see this, I know I'm in a bit of trouble because there is no access panel cut in right here. That means I'm gonna have to access it through some way other than right out here. Now, as soon as I open this, <laughs> And I see there's my water panel, my control panel. I've got to pull all that apart to get over to there. Or hopefully I'm going to go inside and find an area that I can access it from inside because it is cold out. We're going to see. So once I realized what the, where the access was and I calmed down and stopped cussing the manufacturer for a little while, <laughs> I had to find my owner's manual because I didn't have access to find out what the make and model was. Um, it's one of the first things you should do when you first buy an RV is go through all the owner manual information. Mercedes went ahead and organized all this for me, drove me crazy doing it, but now I'm so grateful that she did. I went on Amazon, I ordered these two things. Both of them took between four and seven days to get them. They were only about 17, 18 bucks. So I can either access it outside near my water panel or I'm gonna have to go behind here, which means I'll just pull this couch out. So this is the side that I decided to go into. As you guys can see, I've taken the trim off. You wanna be super careful when you take this trim off not to break it, because you wanna reuse it as best you can. Come down here, pull this back, and there it is. There's my furnace. And if you look through, you'll see the exhaust parts right back there. I need to pull these screws out and then slide this back. What I'm looking for in this is to find out where the sail switch is, S-A-I-L, sail, like sailing. Got to find my sail switch and my limit switch. And I'm hoping that I don't have to pull this whole thing out of here. A lot of the videos that I looked at, they did. They had to disconnect all of these vents and intakes. Um, and, uh, and pull the whole system out. I'm hoping not to have to do that because then I'll probably have to remove some of this framing, but we'll do what we have to do. And then once you got those gears connected, I'm really hoping that I don't have to take all these vents off um, just because I don't want to have to struggle with trying to get it back together. And I'm trying to do this while Mercedes and the baby are sleeping without waking them. Trying to get them heat as quick as I can. This should slide back. 
Yep, there it is. It's away. You can see in there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be looking for my sail switch or my limit switch. There it is. That's breaking loose. My sail switch should be back here on the blower somewhere. And there it is. There's my sail switch right here. And typically, um, if that's clogged up, you'll see hair or dust that is stopping that um, from starting up. So what happens when you turn your blower on, you'll hear your blower turn on first, and then the system wants to know that it's getting good flow before it gives you the flame. You can bypass the sail switch by connecting these two wires that are connected to it, connect those together, and if suddenly your system will start up, then you know it's the sail switch. All right, so I went ahead and I uh, bypassed the sail switch and connected the two wires that are connected through the switch. Um, and it still did not light up. That means that my limit switch is probably gone. 90% of the time, when you have a problem with your furnace in an RV, it's going to be a sail switch or a limit switch. Now, I did a little bit of research on this unit. Suburban is the manufacturer of most of the um, RV furnaces. I can take all these vents off or I can just maybe slip this cover off. I won't have to disconnect these vents and hopefully my, my limit switch is right there. Yes. Now I should be able to take this cover off and see where my limit switch is. There it is, you see where the limit switch was? I actually disconnected, I connected the two wires to the limit switch and I just connected those directly to each other. Now this bypasses the limit switch. The limit switch senses heat. And so when you got really cold temperatures and your RV furnace is running constantly, there's a very good chance that your limit switch will trip. It works as kind of a circuit breaker for heat. And once it pops, you can't save it. You've got to get a new one. So make sure and go ahead and order an extra limit switch, order an extra sail switch, S-A-I-L. And guys, this is gonna be 90% of the problems you have with your RV furnace during the winter time. This is a quick bypass. You, don't know, you do not wanna use this long term. All I did was I connected the two together. I went ahead and I started my furnace. So that's how I figured out that it was the limit switch that was bad. So now I just gotta grab my other limit switch, throw it in there, connect those wires back to it, and we're good to go. So what I'm gonna do now is just go ahead and install the new limit switch. The hardest part about this is getting the camera set where I need it. There. Don't over twist these guys, just put enough on there. And then basically connect. High and low. Oh, I gotta pull this air out. This little air is the one that I cut off to connect these two wires. All right, now we'll just go ahead, turn on the, um, go ahead and turn on the heat and see if it fires up. So there she goes. There it goes. And we got heat. That's all it was guys, a $17 product that kept us cold for way too long. Do yourself a big favor and order an extra limit switch and an extra sale switch. Hope this video helped guys.